So for the culling tool part of the tutorial, we're gonna need a actual model to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here on create. I'm gonna to go to body. I'm gonna click on female as it's much easier to show you how this works. Particularly that as there's much more accessible uh, ways to access the mesh. For the culling tool, we are going to need to access the advanced options. So you click on the advanced options in the little right submenu here. If you do not see the submenu, it is because you are uh, in the middle of a trait group that you have nothing selected. So you can see that I have no glasses currently equipped and I have no submenu. So if you equip some glasses, you will see that you have the submenu. And if you enable the advanced options in one, you've enabled the advanced options in all of the submenus. So for specific to the body and the clothing, it culling is the only advanced option, and every other trait, face, hair, whatever, uh, all 13 of them have two other advanced options, and you do have to scroll all the way down. So it's below trait position and trait scaling, and here is the culling from there. I'm going to go ahead and remove these glasses so that you can kind of see part of a uh, part of a tutorial that I do want to go over. Uh, I'm going to go to the body here, and I must have double clicked on something. Uh, yeah, must have control clicked. Um, so for the advanced options, I'm going to scroll down just a bit so you can see a little bit better. The best way to explain the culling is to just show you. So we have three different options. We have layers cull out and cull in. So the cull in, not really going to go over is specific to the body as I don't recommend doing anything, any cull in distance to the body as it can create problems inside the mesh. But that is for the cull in distances for other stuff like wings, weapons, anything like that to where you don't want to render until you get them to be close enough. So for the layer the easiest way is to just explain it by showing you without going a huge granular control explanation. So if I set the, the body is set to layer zero and the clothing is both factory set to layer one. So that means that the layer one has control over layer zero, layer two has control over layer one and two, or I'm sorry, one and zero, three has control over two, one and zero, so on and so forth. I believe we have 999 layers, and you can access them all if you want. I don't know why you would, but you do have that option. However, there is a setting that matters on the layer being controlled as well. So if you have the cull out distance set to zero, that grants no authority to a controlling layer to cull anything out because it is cull out distance is set to null or zero means it does not matter if it's right on top of it it will not cull it out and the best way to show you that is just like i said to demonstrate it again layer one has i will turn these all the way to zero so layer one controls layer zero and even though i've set layer one to zero and zero layer zero does have a cull out distance active and you can see that this mesh inside of the collarbone a little bit here on the breasts and the upper shoulders over here i guess that's all of the collarbone and then this mesh here underneath the arm wraps here has been culled out and if i set this back to zero meaning that it does not matter what the settings of layer one are uh, i'm going to go ahead and call it uh, i'm not going to grant any access to a higher layer to call anything out and you will see that all of this mesh will come back in again uh, just to demonstrate it one more time so I will call it out and then by setting it to basically any number that is higher than 0.01 and you will see that the mesh starts to actually get called out and then if I set it to zero it will call it uh, it will not call it out. It will just render every piece of the mesh. Now this is all for rendering performance, both for your machine and the engine, or the server running whatever you're doing, and other people's machines, as there is no reason for them to need to render all of the body mesh underneath your clothing. This also saves uh, a lot of clipping issues that you can uh, you will find in extreme angles, especially in stuff in like VR chat. You have multiple layers of mesh enabled that VR chat and other simple Unity engines do not register double jointed 
uh, joints to make things much smoother and look more much more mechanical. So, and out, all of our armatures are set up for VR chat. So they have created this culling tool to actually get around some of the many, many issues that people have when you're compiling uh, mini VRMs on top of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and set the culling layer on the clothing to layer 2 to demonstrate it does not matter. It does not have to be perfectly one over and you can set it. There are many ways to do this. Like if you wanted the hair to cull out the clothing, you could do that as well. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and set this to layer 2 to show you that the body will still get culled out. So I'm going to update the culling here. And then I'm going to update this by setting it back to 0.03. And you will see that layer 2 does in fact control layer 0. I will set it to 999 as well. Uh, and you can see that this is still getting called out. Now if I set it to 0, you will see that it will come back in because layer 0 is equal to layer 0. And that means it has no controlling ability over an equal layer. After you've selected all of the traits that you want for your model, it now is the time to start doing your culling. The reason why I say this is because every time you select a trait, it has to re-update the culling because it's adding another trait and it's selecting the culling layer for that trait. So many of the glasses or any head accessories are set to zero. So that updates it to, puts it on layer zero as well. So it has to update all of zero, which means it updates all of the layers. So if you're, interacting with a mesh like you've already figured out that you can double click on mesh to render it in and you or you've accidentally rendered something out by holding control and clicking because you're moving around you're hitting shift and uh, orbiting around because you're used to blender controls and not right click like unity controls the uh, you may have noticed that you've rendered something in or rendered something out uh, on accident and you don't know what you've done uh, that is part of the process but that's more towards the end because as you add traits, you update all of the layers. Like I'm going to go ahead and add a weapon to this one. Uh, I'm going to select some bats. And you will see that it is on culling layer 0 as well. So every time you add a trait, you are updating the culling. So before you play with all of the culling settings, you're going to want to add all of the traits in. That way you're not doing a bunch of this over and over and over. Because it does get frustrating. I've added all of the traits that I want on this one. I'm actually going to take the glasses off. I've added all the traits that I want on this one. I'm going to go ahead and start selecting mesh and looking for mesh in places that aren't necessarily intuitively culled in or culled out. For the hair specifically, I recommend setting it to layer zero so that it does not cull any of the actual head mesh out and it doesn't do anything with eyelashes or anything like that while it's moving around. So once you've selected all of your traits, you can go ahead and start working with the mesh, rendering it in or culling it out. If you find an animation where you have a little bit of clipping, like I'm gonna go ahead and choose the walking animation. I know there's a little bit right here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it. I'm gonna go ahead and select this and render it out by holding control click. And then select all of these polygons. And then I would go through the rest of the model, go through a couple more animations, just some uh, movement animations so that you can find, and apparently I've double clicked here somewhere, um, any, any missing mesh that you either want rendered in or mesh that you do not want rendered in for however you want to set up your model. Once you've done all of this, you can go to the next page and you will it will be in whatever position you were in. So if you want to do one last quick check, I do recommend going back to the T-Pose and then clicking next as you can still work with the mesh right here. So if there's any small touch-ups you want to do here or if you want to add or remove any mesh while in the T-Pose here, you can still do that from this menu. If you have any other questions on how to use any of the culling tool, please feel free to email me at techsupport at cstud.io. I am the uh, owner of that particular email and I do all of our tech support and a lot of our QA as well. So if I didn't explain anything other than specifically cull in as I do not recommend non-experienced culling users to even use the cull in, which is kind of why I barely glossed over it. Just recommend not using it all. Please feel free to email me. Again, that is techsupport at cstud.io. 
I am Drag Mutt. Thank you for watching the video. And if you have any other questions, feel, for, feel free to contact me. And again, thank you for choosing Character Studio.